What a blessing it always is when Shane and Alyssa sing for us. Praise God. Welcome to the Morgan in Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, where it's always, always about Jesus. Amen? We would like to welcome each one of you here, and, and especially those that, that are joining us on the Internet, uh, maybe perhaps all throughout the world. Uh, isn't it wonderful to be part of the family of God? It really is. I've got something to tell you that's very important. If you don't get, if this is the most important thing that you need to get out of the whole message. Jesus loves you. Isn't it wonderful to know that Jesus loves you and he cares about you? Uh, God has got a message for us today, but we really don't need to open up the word of God unless we pray first. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, that you have brought us here today. We really need to hear a word from you. Lord, it wouldn't be fair for anyone to hear me. Would you please hide me behind the cross that, that your children could get a word today that would encourage them, that would give them direction. Maybe they're missing something in their Christian walk, and today, Lord, I pray that you help them find it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I thank God for the word. The Word of God has changed my life. It's, uh, and, and I know that you probably have testimonies that you could share too, what the Word has done in your life. And so, let's open up the Word. Amen? Acts chapter 1. Not Acts chapter 1. I want to start with Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. I hear the pages rattling as we speak. I'm going to take some prayer requests out of my... Bible, Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Therefore, this is Jesus talking here, and he says, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest. Houston, we have a problem. Have you heard that before? Houston, we have a problem. We've got a, a, a problem here. You know, uh, there, there's a little problem, and Jesus brings it up. Uh, but what's the harvest? The, the, the good part is the Bible says that the harvest truly is great, but what's the problem, church? The labors. The labors. They're, they're, uh, he says the harvest truly is great, but the labors are Few, okay. So, what's the what's the real root of the problem here? I mean, did did God make a mistake? Did he not? He knew that the harvest was going to be great because he's God, right? So, did did God not call enough labors for the harvest? How many how many labors does God call? How many is called? All of us, every one of us. So the problem is that there's not enough labors. The problem is there's not enough laboring labors. I mean, that's the real issue of the problem that we, that we have here. And, and so I, I want to look at it today and we can see, you know, what, what's the real root of the problem here? Because, you know, these are, all the labors are good. These are the cream of the crop. These are Christians, right? These are the good people that you see walking around. These are not the bad people. These are the good people. So I think there's probably just something missing in their life. They're probably missing out on something and they don't know what it is and they don't even know. They don't even realize that they're missing out on this. It's something that would set their faith on fire. You know, it you know, I think if most of us were honest, we might think, you know, there's got to be I'm missing out on something in my Christian walk, in my experience. You know, a, lo a lot of us might even agree that, that we don't see God working in our life maybe the way that, that we would like to see Him working. I know I could even say that. Uh, you, you, there might be some of you out there that, uh, that might have not seen God really working a miracle in your life or maybe not even working through you toward anybody else. You know, you just can't see there's nothing really happening in your life. Maybe you might even be thinking, my, my Christian walk is just a little stagnant. Maybe, uh, maybe that fire has, has gone out that, that was really once burning really bright 
in your life. Well, I think the, I think the problem is, is something that God wants to fix. Amen? I believe God wants to fix this problem. And I want to illustrate this to you, if I could. I think the easiest way to, to get a point across sometime is, is to use an illustration. Now, what do I have here? I have a, what kind of stool is it? It's a three-legged stool. Now, uh, a three-legged stool cannot be a three-legged stool unless it has all three legs. I think the problem, I think the problem that, that a lot of Christians have, the reason that they are not experiencing God moving and working in their life, the, the way that, that God would want Him to be working in their life, is it's the third leg of the stool. I think that's what it is. Because, see, each one of these legs are important, right? You've got to have all three legs. What would happen if, only, if, there, were only two, if there were only two here? <laughs> I would fall, right? Yeah, if only two of the legs were there, I would fall. And that would, and that would create a pretty big accident. So the stew is not really any good. It's not complete unless it has all three legs of the stew. See, it's the same way in our Christian walk. To be a Christian, there's three Things that are very important. One of them is the Word of God. Amen? We must have the Word of God. You've got to have the Word of God. Uh, another is prayer life. I mean, prayer, prayer changes our things. Prayer changed my life. I'm a product of prayer. We've got to have prayer and we've got to have God's Word. But there's another missing ingredient to be complete, to be a complete Christian, and that's being a witness. That's doing something, doing something with your faith. You know, I, it's, I see this really, I see this a lot in people's life. I see people come in to the church, would have a revival, an evangelistic meeting, and, and there are folks that will come in, and they will be on fire. You know, they, they're opening up the Word every night, they're praying and everything. We see God really working in their life. But as I watch them, as time goes on, they kind of lose that fire. I've seen it happen way too many times. They kind of lose it, the fire that they had in their life. You know, they, they start missing a Sabbath here and there. And then before long, they're, they're just coming every other Sabbath. And before long, they're not even coming to church. It's like their fire is gone completely out. And you, you wonder, you know, what's happening? What is missing in their life? Again, I think it's a key ingredient that we're going to look at. You know, it reminds me of a story of, of this, this young man. This young man, um, had, uh, he always wanted to be to jump out of a plane, you know, in a parachute. It's not something that ever crossed my mind. You know, I don't know why anybody would want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, right? I don't know why they'd want to do that. But this young man, he wanted, he wanted to jump out of a parachute. He wanted to be a parachuter. So what he did, he checked it out and he found a school and he enlisted in that school and he began taking classes. And during, in the classes, they had some good instructors. They were, they were teaching about, you know, great parachuters that, that had parachuted in the past. And they looked at all their, their accomplishments and their, and their victories and everything like that. And, and uh, it was really exciting. And then they had to look at their failures. You know, there was a lot of failures that took place too. And they had to deal with that. They covered the entire book on parachuting. And then the big day came. Graduation day. Graduation day. The dean of the school got up and, and delivered a, a stunning message talking about the school and the heritage of the school, talking about this class in particular and all their accomplishments and everything they did. And then the dean says, well, this is what you've been waiting on, your certificate of accomplishment. And he started handing out, you know, the, 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 the paper, the certificate saying, okay, you have, you have won. And the, the young man, he, he, um, he kind of... Scratch his head, and he didn't want to, but he, he raised his hand up kind of sheepishly and, and said, well, I thought that before I could graduate, before I could get a certificate, that I would jump out of the plane first. And everybody just turned and looked at him, and they just gasped, and they said, oh, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> well, isn't that a lot like being a Christian? I mean, we study the Bible. We pray and we do all this. But why do we do all this, folks? Why do, we, why do we study the Word of God? Why do we pray? Why do we go close to God? Why do we learn all about God? Why do we do this in the first place? So that we can be a witness. 
So that we can tell others about Jesus and how good He is and how much He loves us and how much He cares about us. Friends, we've got to do something with our faith. We've got to do something with it. You're not, you're not saved to just, just to, to hold it into yourself. If Jesus has come into your heart, you've got to let Him out. You've got to let your light shine. You've got to jump. Amen? You've got to, you got to finally reach the point that, that you're going to jump, that, you, that you've taken in Jesus, that you've talked to Him, that you know Him as a personal friend, that you know Him as a Savior, and you need to tell the world about it. That's part of it. And you cannot be a complete Christian unless you do that. You cannot be fully complete and you cannot be a healthy Christian unless you're doing that each day. You've you got to use it or you lose it. Amen? You've got, you got, you got to use what you've learned about Jesus and you've got to share it with others. That's where the adrenaline of being a Christian comes from that's where the power comes from that's where the fire comes from so if you're missing something in your christian walk it might be the third leg it might be witnessing you just got to get up enough courage to to jump and and share about jesus share i want to ask andy and holly if they would come up right now uh, they've got a short uh, story to share with us and uh that i'm pretty excited about and uh while they're coming up Oh, turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts, and let's read this together. Are you missing the power of God in your life? Are you missing that fire? Is the fire that you once had about to go out? Listen to the words of Jesus. Now, Jesus, these were Jesus' departing words. His, his departing words should, should be words that we live by. Amen. They should be. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses. See, that God wants to pour out His Spirit upon you. He wants to, he wants to, to go with you out there in the world so that you can witness of His faithfulness and everything. Andy, let me ask you to come up here and get real close to the mic here. And so you can speak directly in that mic okay. and, and speak up very clearly. I've got a question for you. Um, and, and I already know the answer, but are you on fire for Jesus? Yes. You are on fire, Jesus. Have you always been on fire for Jesus? No. No. <laughs> if, if you had to ask, what, what happened in your life that got you fired up for Jesus? Um, when I was sitting out there listening to about prison ministry and yeah. uh, John... Uh, Huskins and Robbie uh, was up here. It just touched my heart, and I just started. I know I had to do something, so that's what got me on board. Amen. Now, now, Andy, how long had you had you been a Christian before this happened? Um, for about thirteen years. Wow. Can you tell there's there's something burning in your heart? now that was not burning for all those 13 years. Absolutely. Praise God. I would say that's the third leg of the stew. Amen? Amen. Holly, let me get you up here and ask you a question. Thank you, Andy. Have you noticed anything different about your husband? Would you please share that? Yeah. And what happened to well, cause it? Well, he, he's a shy man. Um, I... If you don't know, he I'm the one who talks, and he just doesn't. <laughs> um, so a couple of weeks ago, well, it was actually a couple months ago, we were at a friend's house, and she was having a rough time, and all of a sudden he looks over at me and he says, Honey, we need to go pray with her. Amen. But she was out of the room, and I was like, well, well, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. And then she come in, and all of a sudden, uh, we started talking, and I completely forgot about it. Well, before we left, he looks over at her and says, do, do you, uh, is it okay if we pray with you? Praise God. And I look over at him like, who are you? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know you. <laughs> And then, and then we um, 
got in this big circle and he prayed with her. Praise God. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes we got to get our feet wet before, before God can move. Kind of like when the Israelites had to go through the sea. Um, they had to get their feet wet and then the part, the waters part. Amen. Thank you, Holly. They had, you had to jump, didn't you? You had to get, you had to get enough courage to jump. And, and you did that. You, Andy, Andy prayed a radical prayer to God. He recognized the harvest was great. He seen these young men in, in prison. And in his heart, something deep down in his heart was stirred by the Holy Spirit. And, and he says, Lord, I realize the harvest is great. I realize there's a need there. Would you throw me out into the harvest? And what did God do? He did, didn't he? Praise God. Thank you all very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Also, um, he was just telling me, and I didn't know this, this morning he said, you... Usually, when it's time for speaking at school, he would he would be um, sick. So, this right here is also <laughs> pretty awesome. Amen, amen. <laughs> Yet, Andy prayed a radical prayer to God, and give God permission to throw him out into the harvest, and God did it, and God did it. You know, I think that probably. The, 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 what excites me the most about this is that, is that, see, now they know how it works because they know, they, they know the difference. He, he, you heard him say for 13 years he had been a Christian, and, but something was missing, and he knew it was. But when he allowed God to use him to be a witness out there, to just love others, to share the good news of Jesus, something has happened in their heart. And see, as God used him, as he gave God permission to throw him out in the harvest, to, to be used by God to tell someone else about the love of God, something happened in Andy's life. Something happened. See, God wants to change the world through you. Church, God wants to change the world through you. And if you allow God to use you, he will change you. There'll be something happening in your life that you can't describe that only that you'll know that God is the one doing it. So if you're missing something in your life, it might be the third leg of the stool. God not only changes others, but He changes you. He wants to do something in you so He can do something through you. Amen? Praise God. So why I want to ask a question here. Why, why does Andy sacrifice his time to get involved in prison ministry? Why do you think he, he does that? Because it's what God has done for him. He does it because what God has done in his life. You know, he, he, Jesus touched him. Jesus touched his heart. He touched his heart and he lit a fire deep down inside of him. Jesus set him free. Jesus opened up his eyes. Jesus opened his ears up. See, that's what Jesus does. Jesus touches the eyes of the blind and they can see. Jesus touches the ears of the deaf and they can hear. Jesus heals the brokenhearted and he sets the captives free. Amen? That's the good news. That's what Jesus wants to do in each one of our lives. I don't know what's going on in your life. Maybe there's something, maybe your fire's gone out. Maybe you've got something happening in your life and, and you just don't know what to do. The Bible says in Hebrews 7.25 that God can save to the uttermost. The uttermost is your situation. That's what you're going through too. He can save to the uttermost. And, and He forever lives to intercede. That means 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, that Jesus is up there in the heavenly sanctuary. He's looking down and He wants to help you. He wants to help you with whatever is going on in your life. He wants to help you with your children. He wants to help you with your spouse. Maybe you have something that just seems impossible. You've got a spouse that, that, or, or a son or daughter or relative that just seems like they have no interest in Jesus. No whatsoever. Jesus wants to help you. He wants to empower you with the Holy Spirit that you can be His witness. Amen? Praise God. 
See, Jesus never gives up on us. He never gives up. He's always chasing us. One pastor that I really love calls him the hound of heaven. I, I like that. He's always chasing after us. He's on our trail uh, after us, seeking us, wanting to help us out with whatever we're doing. Andy, I praise God that you let Jesus catch you. Amen. Amen. And I praise God that I let him catch me too. I've been running from him. Maybe you're running from him. Jesus loves you. And he wants to use you in a powerful way. Not only to reach and touch and change your life. But to have an impact on those around you. God wants to do that. So what motivates Andy to spend every Friday night in prison? What motivates him? What's the motivating factor that does that? See, it's the priceless awareness that he is the body of Christ walking into that prison. That he's the, the part of the body of Christ walking into that prison. He's the feet of Jesus going through the, those iron gates, walking into that unit, walking to where those men are at. He's the, he's the hands and feet of Jesus. He senses he senses the presence of Jesus in his life as he ministers to these men that may be broken, that might be beat up, that might need to know that somebody cares about him. You know, he can feel the presence of Jesus uh, as, he, as he wraps his arms around those prisoners each Friday night and gives them a big hug. I believe that Jesus loves giving hugs. Amen? I believe that, that he loves giving hugs to those prisoners. He... I, he, I can see personally as I watch Andy on Friday nights as, as he has that big smile and, and, he, and he shares the love of Jesus to these prisoners. As he talks to them, as he listens to them, Jesus is working through them. You see, these prisoners need to know that God loves them and that God cares about them. And, and, and Andy is a laborer. Can I say that? He is a laborer for Jesus Christ. Amen? He's the hands and feet of Jesus walking into that unit sharing the love of God. Because the Bible says that it's the love of God that draws us. The Bible says that it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. The very best uh, training and equipping these men can have is to see someone actually living out the love of God. That gives them hope, doesn't it? And that's, that's the very hope that each one of us really, really needs. You know, friends, what, what God needs is boots on the ground. He needs boots on the ground. You know, we are His ambassadors. God could have chosen angels to share this message, but He, showed, he, but he, but he chose us, erring, sinful human beings. Well, ones that, ones that have, have sinned, ones that have fallen, so we'll know about the grace of God. Amen? See, the grace of God is bigger than our sin. Amen? His grace is bigger than our sin. Our, our God is a big God, a loving God, and a forgiving God. And the world needs to know that. You know, sometimes it, the way that God has worked out this plan of salvation out, we are His hands and feet. We are His hands and feet. Your hands are the hands of Christ. Your feet are are the feet of Christ. Your eyes are the eyes that see those that are hurting. You know, your hands are the ones that, that holds those that, that need to be held. You know, if you don't love them, church, if we don't love them, who's going to love them? If we don't tell them about the real God, if we don't give them a real picture of who God is, how they, will they ever know? How will they ever know if we don't do it? Last night, and every single Friday night that they let us in, Jesus walks into that prison through the Morgan and Seventh-day Adventist prison team. And I want to ask my, my brother Ted to come up, and, and Doug, if you would, if you would. See, Friday night, every Friday night, the, the grace of God walks in, those, in that prison. The grace Grace of God walks in that prison. Every, every night, the love of, every Friday night, the love of God walks in those prison doors. Jesus walks in that prison door through this prison ministry team. Ted is our prison 
ministry team leader. And, and uh, God has really given this man a love for people and a, a love for men. Ted, would you tell us a little bit about your, your prison ministry and your jail ministry and what your goal is? Step close to the mic here when you do so you can speak, speak up. I would have to say, first of all, you know, to God be the glory. Amen. Great things he hath done. We're just amazed when we first used to go to the prison, they didn't give us the minimum security where we could have a class, but just individually. But we've really been blessed. We have between 20 and 25 men coming out, even as high as 28 sometimes. And the Lord is really doing great things. A pastor, I believe, put in our mind, and I really loved it. He said, our Bible studies should be called All About Jesus Amen. Bible Studies. Amen. And that drew a lot of people. John told me one time, he said, I wasn't going to go until I heard that. Praise All God. about Jesus Something Bible Something about studies. the name of Jesus. Right. Um, and the Lord has really blessed. The people on our team is uh, myself, uh, Pastor Rick Mercer, Pastor Barry Mahorny, Walter uh, Moore, uh, Chuck Jinks, uh, Andy Calloway, and Dennis Swartz, who's in the jail ministry with us. And we have had uh, four men join our church. We praise God for that. Uh, we have 12 others studying to be baptized. Praise God. So things are happening. The thing that touched us the most was the jail ministry. We go in there, and I believe they said there was 19 cell blocks with approximately 15 men per cell. Right. And in that would be about 204 men. And Pastor Rick would uh, say, we go down through the aisles and they beg you to come in and tell them about Hungry Jesus. Hungry for Jesus. Hungry. So we're going in individuals, different cell blocks, doing Bible studies with about 15 at a time. And the Lord is blessing. They're falling in love with Jesus. And uh, I guess uh, the main thing we try to tell them at, at, at the prison and in the jails, we try to tell them that that Jesus loves them Amen. very much because, Amen. you know, uh, we will be known as his disciples by our love one for another and by our love for everyone else. Amen. And a couple quick scriptures, the pastors alluded to them, but in Matthew chapter 25, starting with verse 35, Jesus said, For I was a hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. And then as the people says, when did we do this? And King Jesus, and then verse 40, and the king answered and said, and I said unto them, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it, it unto me. me Amen. Said. So it's a tremendous honor to go in for Jesus into Amen. these units. And then one other verse, and that's pretty well sums it up, which gives us the strength and the power to want to go. And that's in Matthew chapter 28, 18. Listen to what Jesus says here. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded Amen. you. And lo, I am with you forever, even to the end of the world. Amen. So God, but the blessing is we've received many great brothers. I see some brothers out here. And these are brothers in Christ. For eternity. For eternity. And those men in those prisons know we love them because we tell them, we pray with them, we do hug Amen. them, don't we? Amen. We all Jesus love to hug. loves to hug these guys to us. He does. And one of the ones that's given me a lot of hugs and I know really loves me, and that's uh, Doug Staley. Give me another hug. Yeah. You know, here's some, here's some fruit right here. Doug, would you share with us? We love Doug. He's our family and, and will be our family for eternity. And, and uh, Doug's already been helping out with the service today, already getting involved. I told him he had a full-time job working for Jesus now. Uh, and so, Doug, Doug, tell us a little bit about what this prison ministry team has meant for you. Again, this is the hands and feet of Jesus through this ministry. Well, what it meant for me is, uh, let me tell you a little story. I, I, was, uh, I was an inmate at Foothills there, and um, they had a Bible study called All About Jesus. They come there, 
And one day I was sitting on my bunk, right? And a couple guys came to me and said, uh, hey, you want to go to Bible study? And I was like, what, what's the name of the Bible study? And they said, it's all about Jesus. Amen. I sat there for a while and I thought about what they said, you know, and I was like, well, you know, that name itself, you know, kind of made me want to, you know, see what it's all about, right? So, uh, you know, because most people think it's all about them, you know? Yeah, that's so, right. Thank you, Doug. So I, I said, yeah, I think I'll go. And, you know, the couple guys that asked me to go, one of them was Robbie and the other one was John Hustle. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So ever since then, you know, I went that day and I said, well, yeah, these guys, that's where I met Pastor uh, Red and Brother Ted and Walt yeah. and Pastor Barry. And I, we sat there and we discussed the Bible studies and, I mean, and they break it down to you and explain to you. And I was like, well, you know, hey, this could, this could start something, you know, because I had a desire to do something different when I got out, you know, because I'm originally not from here. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah. And all my family is in Baltimore. Now you got a family here, don't you? I, I didn't have a desire to go back and do the things that I used to do, you know, and live like that no more. So they gave me a whole new outlook on life. You know, Amen. I said, man, I think I like this. So I, when I got out, I relocated and I moved to Morganton. Yeah. And here I am. I've been here ever since. That's here probably been are, about seven months ago. Here you <laughs> are sharing your testimony around the world for Jesus, Amen. Doug. God can That's do big things. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you so much. Now, let me, let me ask Ted here uh, and Doug, because part of the prison ministry, what can... After hearing this testimony, I'm sure we've got a lot of folks out here that want to get involved in prison ministry. Uh, and so what are some of the things that, that maybe they could do to help out with prison ministry? I will say this, and I forgot to say it earlier. Going in jail ministry, yeah. a uh, pastor handed me a pack of people wanting Bible studies through the mail. Yeah. And then I got a pack of where they'd send them back I need to distribute People in the jails are real hungry because they right. can't get out or do anything. So if you want Bible studies, stay in touch. We can give you Bible studies there. And uh, they have a jail ministry for the ladies, but it's all full up right yeah. now. And, and I can check on prison ministry further to see what we can do there. But there's plenty of Bible study opportunities through jail that we can bring you if you would like to. Fill out, a, I mean, when they send you a Bible study back, correct it, send it to them, give them encouraging words about how much Jesus loves them. Amen. Thank you, guys. One, one thing I can add to that, I have a whole stack of prayer. The, these prisoners are pleading with God. I mean, they, their life's been stopped, and they realize there's something more alive, and so they're reaching out to God. And we, each time that we go in, we give them a prayer slip. And give them an opportunity to lift up a prayer to the Lord. And we tell them, hey, we're going to join you in prayer. Because there's power in corporate prayer. Amen? Amen. When we join someone in prayer, God hears that prayers and will answer their prayers. And so uh, we do have a need for those that might like to be prayer warriors for these people. Maybe you could take some of these, these prayer slips and you can pray for these people. Prayer is the most powerful tool we have on this earth for helping and reaching the lost. Because when we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. So there's power in prayer. Thank you very much, guys. We, yes, sir, things. please. Yes. One thing we try to always tell the men, and I believe Chuck's good at this too, what we try to tell them is Jesus loves you very special. Amen. And we do too. Because if we don't love the brethren, then we don't love Jesus. Amen. Because he's all love. Amen. But uh, keep us in prayer. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, guys. That's, now, that's a powerful message in itself. Amen? Now, this is the message. When, when we go with God, when we, when we go for God, we're going with God. Amen? Right into those prisons. Anywhere else that you might go. And Andy's bringing one next week. Praise God. Praise God. Church, every single time that we meet the needs of others in Jesus' name, we represent the living Christ. We represent the living Christ to the world. We give them a picture of the real Christ, who He really is. See, the devil has got the world uh, uh, duped on this. He's given an incorrect picture of who God really is. We've got to share with the world a real picture of who God is. Amen? We've got to do that. Every time we unselfishly minister, 
Every time that, that we give kind words, every time that we lend a helping hand, every time we show compassion to others, every time we show the love of Jesus, we're ministering in Jesus' name and giving the world an accurate picture of who Jesus Christ really is. Amen? Praise the Lord. See, we have been called by God to give the world a visible manifestation of the truly unselfish character of God in a totally selfish world. That's who we are. That's who we are. So why, why do we, church? Why do we go out there into the world? Why, why do we go out there and, and love on others? Why do we sacrifice our time? Which is valuable, by the way. Why do we sacrifice our time to go out and, and help others, lending a help a hand, showing compassion? Why do we do this? Because we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? That's why. We have been set free. Our eyes have been opened. Uh, the shackles are gone. We're not only controlled, we're not living our life just to please self. Think about what a selfish, boring life if it was all about just pleasing self. If it was all about me, me, me all the time. Friends, our eyes have been opened that we live, that we exist, that we serve for a higher purpose than just pleasing self. The most miserable people on earth are the, on, are the ones that live for self only. The happiest people on earth are the ones that constantly give and give back to the world and give back to God what He's done in their life. We have been bought with a price. Amen? We have been redeemed. Our life is not our own anymore. So, we give, we give in service because we have been served by Jesus. Amen? We minister to others because He ministers to us. That's the reason we do all this. You know, the call of the cross. Don't miss this right here. The call of the cross is not just coming to church. The call of the cross is just not putting a $20 bill in the, in the collection plate. The call of the cross is to give your life to Jesus, to serve Him, to be His hands and feet. The call of the gospel is to follow in the footprints of Jesus, meeting needs everywhere. That's the true call of the cross. So what are we, church? What are we called for? What do we do? We are the body of Christ. Meeting the needs everywhere. Unselfishly serving in Jesus' name. Our goal is not to be another church in the community, but to be the church to the community. Our goal should be, be looking for ways that we can meet the needs in our community. There's a hurting world out there. There's people that need to know that God cares about them, that God loves them. You see, the more ministries, each ministry that we have in this church is another limb to the body of Christ. Amen? And the more ministries we have, the more people that we're going to be able to reach for Jesus. The less ministries we have, the less we're going to be able to meet. If we do not serve, if all we do is read the Bible and it's all we do is, is, is pray, we're just going to become so selfish and so self-focused that we're just going to die up. Friends, if you want to live, if you want to be a complete Christian, we've got we've to witness for Jesus. We've got to tell others what God is doing in our life and what He wants to do in their life. Amen? Praise God. You know, that's why right now, would you, who's ready to jump? I hope after the testimonies we've heard today, we're all ready to jump. Do you want, do you want the fire of God, the presence of God in your life? Then, then let your faith be active. Let your faith live. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. This coming Sunday, tomorrow, tomorrow, we're going to be meeting at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock in our gym. And we're going to have, we're going to prepare for our next God's Closet ministry. Now, our God's Closet ministry is a ministry of God's, amen? Where what we do is we provide clothing for, for young children. There's a lot of moms out there that cannot afford to buy their children clothes. Do you know how much clothes cost now for young kids? Their children's clothes are, are just as expensive as, as adult clothes. 
and how quick the children grow. There, there's so many moms out there that, that are just devastated because they cannot clothe their children. And everybody, everybody's, you know, it's kind of, we, we, we want our children to look nice. So you, you hate to send them to school with the same clothes over and over. So God has put it on the Morgan Church's heart to start this ministry. Think about it. Every time, starting at, at 9 o'clock in the morning, we're going to be folding clothes, getting all the clothes out. We've been collecting clothes for months now. And what we'll do is we'll open our doors next Friday, next Friday at, at 9 o'clock in the morning and keep the doors open to 12 o'clock and, and these parents will line up. We had 471 people come through the first time we opened the doors, reaching them for Jesus, reaching them for Jesus, 471. And keep in mind, every item of clothing you're folding for these children, that you're, you're looking at the size, you're putting it on the table. Every single piece of clothing you handle, you are the hands of Jesus. Handling that shirt, handling that pants for that young child that Jesus wants to say, Here, I want to clothe you. Praise God. If you do it, you see, if you do it to the least of these, who are you doing it to? You're doing it for Jesus. Praise God. Why do we do this, church? Why do, we, why do we sacrifice our time? Because for the priceless awareness that we get to be the hands and feet of Jesus. For say, for, for like a few hours, for a few hours, we, we get to, to be a representative of Jesus Christ to these families that are needing, these families that are hurting. Every piece of clothes you handle, we have a priceless awareness that, that we are representing Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you ready to jump? Have you, have, you, have you sat and read and listened and learned enough? I think that, that, if, that the very best way to work out your own salvation is by aggressively seeking the salvation of others. If you want, if you want, if you want to push out the evil in you, fill your life with good. Ask Jesus into your life and give Him permission. I want to challenge you to pray that radical prayer. That radical prayer. The harvest truly is great. The harvest truly is great. There's a whole world out there that don't know Jesus. There's a whole world out there that's hurting. Why does Jesus tell us to pray? He says, the harvest truly is great, but the labor is few. What does, he, what, does, what does he tell us to do about the problem? Pray. Why do we have to pray? Maybe so that we can see like God sees. Maybe we could be so busy and so wrapped up in our own life, providing our, and meeting our own needs, that we don't see as God sees. Maybe we need to pray so that God can open up our eyes. Maybe we need to pray so that we can see like He sees. That we can look at life from a different perspective. Instead of an eye point of view, that we could look at it from an other's point of view. Amen? That's what God wants more than anything. There's so many ways that you can be the hands and feet of Jesus. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But in this church, we've got many ministries that we could use, that God could use your help in. There, not, everyone's not called to do everything. But everyone is called to do something. Every one of you are called in the ministry to do something. And you will not be a healthy Christian unless you do something for Jesus. You know, we got prayer ministry. I hope we can all get involved in prayer ministry. We, we have prayer ministry. We got youth ministry. We got God's closet ministry. We got prison ministry. We got men's ministry. We got women's ministry. And let's, be, let's think outside the box. There's, there's, there's probably a million ways that you can be the hands, of Je hands and feet of Jesus to those out there. If you give God permission, if you get up in the morning and you say, Lord, I realize that the harvest is great. And I realize from Scripture who I am. And that you're trying to awaken me. I give you permission to use me today. 
If you do that, I promise you that Jesus will use you. That He will throw you out into the harvest and you'll be a laborer. Give God permission to give you divine contacts. Give God permission to lay someone on your heart to maybe contact or maybe to go visit. God will shock you on how He will use you. God wants to use you to change the world. And as He uses you to change the world, He'll change you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for the message that you give us today. Lord, we, we've known that something's been missing. That our fire has is, is, is been going out. But today, Lord, you put fuel in our fire. Thank you for opening our eyes. Lord, we want to be your hands and feet. We want to paint an accurate picture of who you are to the world. We want to bring glory to you with our life. So fill us with your spirit, Lord, that we can share with the world how good you are, how faithful you are, and how much you love us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.